This is a real show with real people talking about real issues with a real attorney. Now it's time to lawyer up. As a criminal defense attorney, I represented many young men charged with assault on a female. I've represented many young men charged with assault by strangulation and, and so many other violent crimes against women. Now, sometimes those charges happen to be bogus. I've represented guys who were charged with assault on a female simply because he didn't pay a phone bill, or he was charged with assault on a female because she caught him cheating, or, or he was trying to move on with the relationship. But sometimes these assaults, this domestic issue, is a very serious issue. So many young women and so many older women and even some men have been victims of domestic abuse. These are very serious situations that need to be addressed. So we decided to talk to a variety of people to learn a little bit about the real ins and outs of domestic violence. Welcome back to Lawyer Up. We're here with Miss Tina Shelley, and we're talking about some very serious issues right now with domestic violence. And it's my understanding that you actually had a domestic violence relationship. Am I right? Yes, yes, sir. I did. Um, some years back, it's been about 10 years ago now, 10 huh. years or more ago now, okay. I was a victim of domestic violence myself. Uh, t tell us a little bit about that. I mean, what type of situation was it? I mean, so much domestic violence, some of it's just verbal, and some of it's, some of it's actually very, very bad. So kind of what was going on with your your situation? Right, that's true. Um, a lot of people think that domestic violence is just physical. In my case, it didn't start with physical abuse. Mm -hmm. He started with the yelling at me, just trying to scare me, intimidate me. And from there, it escalated to throwing things, wow. breaking things, um, trying to choke me, um, escalated even more to trying to stab me with a knife, Wow! trying to cut me with a box cutter. And probably one of the worst incidents was when he tried to set me on fire. Now, I hate that I know this is taking it back, bringing some bad memories, but kind of what kind of what happened in that situation? Trying to say, I mean, um, that's with, unusual. With that, we were, we had had a really bad argument mm -hmm. and it just kind of escalated from there. And as I'm driving us down the road, he just kept flicking a lighter, mm -hmm. trying to set me on fire as I drove the car. So. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Now, um, you said it started off non-verbal and excuse me, non-physical, just verbal, nothing aggressive at that point. Just talk. What type of things were going on with that? What type of signs was he showing you that he would actually lead uh, to a verbal, um, excuse me, a physical altercation? What type of signs was he showing you with the words? Um, with that, just calling me names, mm -hmm. um, just saying about how stupid I was, or mm -hmm. saying you know that things that I said didn't make sense. Whatever he could to try to intimidate me or belittle me right. is what he would do. And then when I guess he saw that that didn't scare me enough, then it started with the uh, throwing stuff or even little childish things, trying to hide my things in the house. Like he was very jealous of my success. It was just really kind of petty. Now was this guy your boyfriend? Your, your were you were you married to him? What was, the, what was the relationship at that time? He started out as my boyfriend, but I married him. Okay, help me out because a lot of people have this this type of situation where crazy stuff is happening as a as a boyfriend, and but despite the crazy stuff that was going on, yeah. kind, of, kind of what was going on that you still you still what happened? What was going on with that? I just really wanted our family to be together right. and I thought well it'll get better once we get married and it was not as bad when we were just dating it was maybe just a little verbal abuse right but 
after we got married, the abuse got worse. Mm -hmm. And then he began to abuse drugs and alcohol and the abuse got even more, you know, intense. So was was he bad when he was sober or was he bad just at all times? I mean, what type of situation? It's, it seemed to be worse when he wanted the drugs or wanted the alcohol. That seemed to be when he was even more violent. So not when he was actually under the influence, but when he had the thing, the desire for Exactly, it. exactly. Because when he, he was under the influence, he was mellow. That was the happy him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, did, did the police ever have to get involved with your situation? Did you ever call the police on them? Did he get arrested or what, kind of what happened with that situation? Yes, I called the police several different times and pressed charges against them and sometimes I dropped the charges. So that really didn't help the situation because it kind of gave him a crutch that, oh, she'll never really stand up against me. Wow. So did, you, did he ever get arrested because of the, your, your calling? And yes, yes, he was arrested several times and then we'd work on it and we'd get back together. Wow. So how long did this uh, relationship actually last? About three or four years. Yeah. So three or four years married or three or four years entire entire relationship? Um, we dated for maybe a year and a half. We were married for about three to four years. Wow. Yeah. So you endured this abuse for years? Yeah. So how did you finally uh, escape from this, this cycle that you said you were in, this back and forth? How did you escape from it? I think I started to recognize that it was just not safe. It was just not safe. It wasn't safe for myself or my son. And mm -hmm. I became fearful that he might eventually kill me. Wow. And so um, when my son was getting ready to start kindergarten, I left him because I felt like he had witnessed enough. Wow. So through your tragedy and through all the, the things that were going on in your life, you, you're not just a victim of domestic violence. I guess, I guess it's safe to say you're now an advocate to fight fight against domestic violence, am I right? I mean, yes. you have an organization, is it called uh, Ladies of Ladies of Purpose? Yes, that's right. T tell me a little bit about that organization. Um, last year I started a nonprofit organization called Ladies of Purpose, mm -hmm. and um, we want to educate people more about domestic violence awareness um, in general, because like I said, a lot of times people think that physical violence is the only type of domestic violence, but there's several different forms. Right. Our main goal is to be able to secure enough grant funding to build a set of apartments where female victims of domestic violence and their children can right. come to live once they leave the local domestic violence shelter here okay. in Pitt County. So if anyone wanted to donate to that program or donate to that organization, is there any way they can contact you? If they wanted to be involved with the organization, is there a way they can contact you so they can learn or find some way to participate? Yes, yes. Um, we have a website set up. We also have a Facebook page and okay. they can also email me. Our um, website is www.ladiesofpurpose2013.com. Okay, www.ladiesofpurpose2013.com. Yes. All right, and what else, what else do you have? Um, or if they want to call me about donations, it's 252-624-9659. Okay, 252-624-9659. Okay. Well, look, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. and It's a very serious yes. issue. Hopefully, we can thank work you. together and find some way to stop it. Yes, thank, thank, thank you for having me. All right, we'll be back. Lawyer Up is a real show with real people telling their real story. Now, we strive at Lawyer Up to make sure that we get both sides of the story. In the show that aired previously, in the show that aired today, we have victims of domestic violence. And they are telling their account of what happened. I emphasize that they are telling their account because there are two sides to every story. And only one side will be aired and one side will be shown on this show. We apologize in advance if we have offended anyone, uh, family members, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers. If we offended anyone, we apologize for not airing both sides of the story. However... We are more than willing to air and we're more than willing to interview anyone that has another account that they want told. We want to make sure that we get the issues out there and make sure that people's thoughts and opinions are heard. Thank you for tuning in to Lawyer Up. And we're back here at the Center for Family Violence and Prevention, and we're here with Miss Lynn Owens. Am I right, Miss Owens? How are you doing great. today, Miss Owens? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. Now, here's what I want to know. We've had so many people so far on this show talking about how they've been abused and how they didn't really have any help. Uh, how does the Center for Family Violence and Prevention actually help people? What do y'all do here? 
We have a number of services to help people who have been in abusive relationships. We have counseling, which is actually provided by licensed counselors. I'm a licensed professional counselor. We have a safe house and shelter for women and children who need a safe place to stay. We offer parenting classes. We have um, the family center where we do supervised visits. Um, so a child can visit with a parent where it may not be safe for them to be with the parent without supervision. And we also have exchange where parents can go um, if one parent gets the child for the weekend the other parent can take the child there and the parents don't have to have contact with each other um, we have advocacy services we have advocates who can help people do all the paperwork they will go with them to court and help them to get a protective order um, against their abuser well, let me ask you this what do you actually do what is your your particular role uh, with this organization? As a licensed professional counselor, I provide counseling to adults, to children. I do family counseling as well. And what I do is to help people to heal and recover from a history of abusive relationships and help them to avoid abusive relationships in the future. And that involves a lot of things. Sometimes people have developed anxiety or depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. So those are all issues that I would treat and work with people people to help them resolve. Um, usually when people are in abusive relationships, they have a history of being abused that started with their family of origin, where either they were abused by a parent or caregiver, or they witnessed abuse of between their parents or caregivers. And so that's something that we address in the counseling is just going that far back to address those unresolved issues, which helps them to, to heal and to move forward and avoid abusive relationships in the future. Now, it sounds like you're telling me that you, you work a lot with people that are victims of abuse. Uh, you work a lot with people who have a history of, of being around abuse and seeing abuse. And although they might not have been abused, abused themselves, but they may have seen it through a parent or seen it through some other type of relationship they've been involved in. Let me ask you this, but do, do you actually work with uh, actual abusers, people who actually have uh, been actually done abuse, uh, abuse or have uh, went to court for abuse or things of that nature? Do you do anything like that here? Yes, we do. Um, we don't do that in this office. We do that at our family center over on, on Evan Street. It's called um, the GREAT program. It's abuser treatment program and it's a 26-week program and it is for people who have abused other people. Um, and Primarily it's men but we do have women as well in that treatment program. Okay so you have two different organizations, in, or is it one organization? One organization, but we have multiple facilities and, and programs. Um, so if the court hasn't ordered a person to go to abuser treatment, but they know they need to fix their situation, they need to fix what's going on in their life, how would they go about getting involved in either a great program or come here to the Center of Family Violence and Prevention? How would they actually get involved in that situation? I'm sure you don't just come and walk in and say, hey, uh, I'm an abuser. I mean, what, what, is, what is the steps? If someone um, is an abuser, what they would need to do is call our family center, and that number is 758-5021. Say, say it again a little bit slower. It's 252-758-5021. Five zero two one, and they can call and say that they want to enroll in the abuser treatment program and they absolutely can do that um, voluntarily they do not have to be ordered by the court to enroll in that program now a lot of people who have have issues they've been victims of domestic violence or they are perpetrators of domestic violence themselves they don't, they don't not looking to pay money to, to work on their problems so i mean how, how is that addressed here? I mean, I, I know that I've been suffering through domestic violence from a spouse or from a or a, a domestic partner I've been going through. I don't have the money to come get the help. I don't have the money to come get the counseling that we need. How, how do you all address that here at the Center of uh, Family Violence Prevention? Well, one of the benefits of our program and why we're such an asset in the community is because we provide a very low cost counseling. Um, again, I'm a licensed professional counselor and so is the other counselor here on staff and the average fee for a, an hour session with a licensed counselor in this area is about a hundred dollars um so people are able to come here and get a hundred dollar service for as little as three dollars um <laughs> let me make sure i get this thing right you're telling me that it typically costs about a hundred dollars an hour for a counselor mm -hmm. but they can actually come to your program and, and get services from you a licensed counselor for only three dollars Wow. We charge, um, we use a sliding scale. It's based on income. 
Um, the minimum is $3. The maximum is $30. And we don't turn anybody away if they can't pay. So if someone comes in, they have been a victim of domestic violence, and they can't even pay the $3, we would still provide services and counseling. Well, as, as a licensed counselor, someone who I'm sure deals with these uh, domestic violence issues on a day-to-day -day basis or, or a weekly basis at, at minimum, is there any piece of advice that you think um, the, the viewing audience needs to hear? Is there anything that you think that you just need to let them know about uh, based upon your experience and things that you kind of have seen throughout your career? Is there any one thing or one or two things that you feel they need to know? I think people need to know that help is available. Sometimes people hesitate when it comes to getting counseling or therapy because they've gotten the message that they should be strong enough to deal with their own problems or they're weak if they seek counseling. Um, and that's absolutely not the case. It takes um, courage to come here, to talk with someone you don't know, share intimate details of your life. But people benefit from it. I have clients who they've completed their therapy and they were just very thankful um, because it helped them to change their lives. So I just encourage people to just call, schedule an appointment, or if you're not really sure you want to come in, ask to speak with the counselor. Um, I or the other counselor, Stephanie, would be glad to talk and answer any questions that they have. Well, Miss Lynn, we really appreciate your time, and we're going to be right back soon with one more person that works at the Center of Family Violence Prevention. Thomas Lynch, No Exit Productions. Regina Sanders with Sanders Photography. I've been in photography business for six years. And the thing that I like most about being a photographer is shooting those special moments that people have together. No Exit Production has been in the business for about 15 years. We cover the gamut when it comes to media production. Uh, we do everything from freelance with ESPN and Fox Sports to our own documentaries and video productions. I love doing weddings family reunions, baby showers, anything that you could possibly imagine that you want to share with someone else. About three years ago, I decided to team up with No Exit Production. It brought my business to another dimension. We now can offer video and photography. When we teamed up with Sanders Photography, it was a perfect fit because we were able to expand our business to photos. you can log on to www.officialnxp.com. Contact Regina Sanders at 252-717-0486 or Thomas Lynch at 252-714-8249. Now we're back with Miss Nellie Heffernan of the Center of Family Violence Prevention. How are you doing today, Miss Nellie? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, my question for you is what do you actually do here for the Center of Family Violence Prevention? I am a victim advocate with this agency, and what I do here is I assist victims of domestic violence, primarily with domestic violence protective orders, emotional support, court advocacy and accompaniment, and basically um, just helping victims guide them through the process in court and also um, bilingual. So we do the Hispanic Outreach Program. We also assist victims of domestic violence who are Hispanic and who need additional services. Let me ask you, because I see you in court all the time. Um, what is your actual role in court? I mean, you're not a DA, so what, what is it that you actually do when you actually go to court with uh, people that are victims of domestic violence? 
So our primary job is done before we go to court. We help and assist victims with the filing process of a domestic violence protective order. We assist them with the paperwork, go to the clerk's office with them, show them what they have to do. And then basically our role in court is to provide emotional support or court advocacy and guidance for them. Going to court can be very scary. A lot of victims are very afraid of their abusers or going to court, period. They don't know the process. They don't know what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to dress what time they're supposed to be there um, you know they they need to see a friendly face they need somebody to talk about their situation um, and so we provide emotional support um, guidance and you know you show them who the attorney is hook them up with legal aid services uh, referrals and uh, you know stuff like that so they're able to see a friendly person that has accompanied them through their process someone they they have we have listened to their story and um, you know we refer them to our, our internal services as well as our external services um, in the community. Let me ask you this. One thing that you just said that has been very true so far from many people we've talked to, a lot of victims of domestic violence are afraid of the abuser. So kind of what do you do as an advocate to help them in a situation in which they're afraid of the, the person that's abusing? What, what do you do? Kind of how do you help them in that situation? Well, in situations like in court where their abuser is in jail, um, you know, we can, there's different things we can do. We can either have them sit outside the courtroom and let the DA know that the person is there, but that she's afraid to be inside the courtroom. So in that way, it takes a little bit of the burden of them being inside the courtroom and have their abuser staring at them or looking at them or just anything. Um, and then also if they want to, you know, if they're feeling emotional and they're going to cry or something like that, not everybody's staring at them. So the Depending on the situation, everybody's situation is different. Everybody's, um, you know, lethality. Every, we do a lethality assessments in our intakes and stuff like that. And you know, their situation can be really different. It, it could be from a victim that has um, just a boyfriend that she met at ECU or something that happened um, that she just doesn't want to see anymore. He won't leave her alone. Type of like a stalking. More to uh, somebody pointed a gun and actually shot the gun at and like an attempted murder type of thing. So it could, you know, the levels are different. And so every victim has special needs and we try to deal with each victim separately and individually. Now you said your primary uh, role happens before you actually go to court. Now I understand you said it's a lot of things you do in court. Uh, you make sure the victim sometimes doesn't have to be in the courtroom. They can have a, a shoulder a cry on so to speak. But what do you do before you actually get into the courtroom? What is the process before you get there? Well, we provide, um, in here in this office, we provide an intake process for the victims that come to see us or call us for um, domestic violence. So um, we'll get a crisis call from a client. They, they're they trying to leave a husband or a boyfriend, or they have a child who's been abused and they've been abused as well. They want to know what to do. They've never been in the situation. They've n they don't know where to go, or they've been referred by DSS or by a doctor's office or by a friend. So we have to start from there. We provide advocacy. We provide um, emotional support. We tell them to come in. We tell them what kind of services we have. We tell them, um, like my coworker Lynn explained, we have a we have a shelter. We have a crisis line. We have a family center. We have counseling available. We have children's counseling available. We have the court advocacy program. If they're Hispanic, we'll provide um, you know those services as well. And so it's all you know different um, services that we let them know what we can do for them. Sometimes they're not ready to leave their abuser. They just want to know some information. So it all depends on the person calling or the person coming in, what kind of services they need. So Let me stop you right there real quick because you said sometimes people will come and they're not ready to leave the abuser. What's going on with that? I mean, if someone, it seems like if someone's getting abused or they're getting, they're getting beat up, they're getting black eyes, they're, they're getting threatened, it seems like that, that person should want to leave. So you mean to tell me people have situations like that and, and they don't want to leave? It's not that they don't want to leave. It's that it's very difficult to leave. It's not very easy for a person who's being abused just to get up and walk out of a situation. They could be financially dependent on the abuser. They could be emotionally dependent. They could love the, the person that's abusing them, but maybe it's just when that person gets drunk or when that person gets high or when that person that person may be suffering from a medical or a mental uh, instability. And, and so for most of the time, 
um, you know, they have a relationship with the person. They've invested time and emotion, emotional, you know, journey with them. And all of a sudden they get, you know, beat up or they get insulted, they get hurt. So it's not so easy to walk out. They've invested. Um, they may have children together. They may have, you know, assets like, a, you know, a, a family home, cars. It's not that easy to walk away. Or they may be pregnant or they may not be working. Or like in my with my Hispanic clients, they may be illegal or, you know, being threatened with immigration or anything like that. Okay. Well, Miss Nelly, if someone wanted to contact you as a court advocate or actually get in contact with the Center for Family Violence and Prevention, what would you recommend to be the first step? What would they need to do? Is there a phone number they can call? Did it just show up? What, what do they do? Um, what I recommend a person that is in a situation um, that they would call our number 252-758-4400 is our office number. We also have a 24-hour crisis line and that's 252-758-3811 and that, um, that crisis line is operated 24-7, 365 days a year. So they can call that number and they can get help um, as far as guidance, um, you know, it, on the weekend, we can't do domestic violence protective orders or anything like that, but if a person is needing some guidance as far as what to do or who to contact in, on Monday or if they need shelter, um, even if our shelters are full, you know, we can, we can refer them to other area shelters, et cetera, or other services. Well, Ms. Nelly, we really appreciate you, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you for talking with us here. All right. Thank you. A popular slogan used to say, love doesn't hurt. Now you may have some emotional hurt, but love shouldn't hurt to the point of domestic violence. No man, no woman should hit you. No man, no woman should belittle you or make you feel like you're less than. If you are one of the many women out there, one of the many men out there that are suffering at the hands of an abuser, I don't care how long the relationship has been lasting. I don't care what you think. You need to get out of the relationship. It is a matter of life and death. So many bad things happen to so many great people because they refuse to get out of the situation. In today's show, we showed you so many different ways, so many different methods of getting out of the situation. Leave, move, call the police, call the Center for Family Violence and Prevention, call someone you need to get out of the situation. It is literally a matter of life and death. Love shouldn't hurt. If the person is hurting you, they don't love you, and you need to leave. Be safe and be blessed. And tune in next time to Lawyer Up.